Today we're going to learn about doing limiting reactant problems, but we're going to do it in a different way. We're going to use, uh, determine the limiting reactant using a gram-to-gram -gram problems, which we have previously done. First, we'll review the reaction of hydrogen plus oxygen combines to form water. We'll look at the balanced reaction, two hydrogen molecules, which is diatomic, plus one oxygen molecule, which is a diatomic as well, yields, uh, I'm sorry, it has a box, it should be an arrow at the top, uh, two molecules of water. Uh, first, we're going to look at how we did this previously when we looked at moles and count molecules, because this, the moles and molecules tells us the ratios in which atoms combine, and that's why we always need to change that from mass to moles or molecules. Um, we see we begin with uh, a selection in the box of six water molecules, and then we have three oxygen molecules, and then it combines to produce uh, six water molecules. So there we have a perfect ratio. And here we see the, what we just mentioned before, I'd counted the molecules where you had the six molecules of hydrogen, the three molecules of oxygen, and producing the six molecules of water. These reactants are combined in perfect proportions. We have exactly the right amount of hydrogen, exactly the right amount of oxygen, and none is left over. This is a situation where both reactants are what we call limiting. In reality, this never happens. In most reactions that occur in nature or happen even in the laboratory, we usually have one of the substances is, is in limiting and one is excess. We usually do not have exactly the perfect ratio. And that's why limited reactant problems are so important. Consider the reaction where we have four molecules of hydrogen reacting with three molecules of water. In this reaction, we do not have the perfect ratio. Um, the most that can be produced from this is four molecules of water, and then there's left over uh, one molecule of oxygen. So in this we would say the hydrogen is limiting and the oxygen is excess. And this is how most reactions actually occur. So here we see the hydrogen is a limiting reactant, the oxygen is the excess reactant, and there is some um, of the excess reactant left at the end of the reaction. The amount of product is determined by the limiting reactant because it limits how much product we can produce. Let's consider one more reaction. In this reaction, we have six molecules of hydrogen, two molecules of oxygen. In this situation, we would expect the oxygen would be, would, would be uh, the limiting reactant because we see um, the most that can be formed would be two molecules of water, and then there's leftover hydrogen. So, at the end, we see there is hydrogen left over. So hydrogen is what we call the excess reactant. Oxygen is what we call the limiting reactant. Uh, it limits how much product can be produced. Um, and then the excess reactant is a reactant in which some, is left over, some of that substance is left over. Remember we call the limiting reactant the, the reactant that is used up first. And that would definitely be the oxygen in this situation. Now we're going to do a problem that's different. Instead of starting with numbers of molecules in moles or numbers of atoms or molecules, we're going to start with actually mass. This is what the chemist will actually use. You rarely actually are able to count moles. So um, you have to change, have, begin with grams and change them to moles. In this problem, we're going to start with 24 grams of oxygen, 5 grams of hydrogen. They're going to react, and we want to determine the mass of water. To do this problem, you have to do two things. You have to do two gram-to-gram -gram problems. One problem is changing grams of ox oxygen, which is a reactant, to grams of water. The second problem is changing grams of hydrogen, which is a reactant, to, to water. Notice that water is a product, and we're changing both reactants to one product so we can compare the amount of product that's produced. Here we see the reaction two um, moles of H2O plus one mole of O2 yields, a box should be a yield arrow, two moles of water. On previous times we've counted, but now we're going to have to change the mass to moles. So we're going to determine this by doing two calculations with gram to gram. Uh, so notice that as we go through this, that we're going to be doing, um, we're starting with hydrogen, oxygen, and then and producing water. But we're going to have to change 
hydrogen to water, oxygen to water, and then we're going to compare both of those to see what's limiting. First, let's look at the calculation of changing grams of oxygen to grams of water. First, we start with the grams of oxygen. Now we're going to use the same process to change grams of hydrogen to grams of water using the same uh, three steps we've used in the past after balancing the equation, which we already have. So we uh, change five grams of hydrogen to, to moles using the molar mass of two. Then we change uh, the mole, moles of hydrogen to moles of water. We know there's a two to two ratio of hydrogen to uh, water in the balanced equation. That's where the 2 to 2 ratio comes from. And now we have moles of water. We don't want to change moles of water to grams, and so we cancel out moles of water, and then we multiply that by 18 over 1. This gives us 45 grams of water. Now we compare these two numbers. We've got 45 and 27. One of these is going to be the amount actually produced. The one that's smallest is the amount that's produced, and that's what we call limiting. So the limiting reactant in this situation would be the oxygen. And the 27 is what we call the theoretical yield. This is how much we would theoretically produce. In summary, when we start with 24 grams of oxygen and we go through the steps, we produce 27 grams of water. And when we start with 5 grams of hydrogen, we produce 45 grams of water. Now, the amount of product that actually is produced is a smaller amount, which is a 27 grams of water. So that means O2 is a limiting reactant, and it is used up completely. And then the excess reactant would be hydrogen, and some of that would be left over after the reaction stops. To summarize, for this problem, the excess reactant would be hydrogen. Every bit of the hydrogen was not used, and there was hydrogen left over at the end of the reaction. The limiting reactant was oxygen. Every bit of the oxygen was used. It was the reactant which ran out first. And the amount of water that was produced in the reaction was 27 grams.